Transporting the American president from one place to another is like a terrifying nightmare, and this nightmare keeps coming true one after another for several American presidents. These presidents are considered to be the most powerful individuals, so they require the highest level of security when they travel. History has shown that two out of four American presidents were killed during attacks while they were traveling. Two examples of such tragic incidents are the assassinations of President James Garfield and President John F. Kennedy. Due to these incidents, it is widely recognized that the president's travels are extremely risky. To address this concern, the Secret Service agents, who are specially trained for this purpose, take charge of the president's transportation. While they try to use Marine One helicopter or Air Force One airplane for longer journeys, if the president's trip is only a 20-minute drive away, they utilize the presidential motorcade. The motorcade consists of more than 50 cars and over 150 people, each with specific tasks assigned to them. Everything is carefully planned for this journey, such as which side of the car the president will sit on, the order of the cars in the motorcade, and who will open the door for the president's car. If anything deviates from the planned arrangements, it is a cause for great concern and alertness for the Secret Service agents. The presidential motorcade is divided into two parts. The first part consists of around 30 motorcycles or police cars, which are positioned approximately 10 minutes ahead of the president's limousine. Their task is to clear the road for the president. A route car leads these 30 vehicles. Usually, these cars reach the location before the president's convoy and block the entry and exit points of the road. This ensures that no other vehicles can enter the road until the president has passed through. However, the method of clearing the road may vary depending on the location. Sometimes, different techniques are employed, such as the use of police motorcycles arranged in a V pattern, as shown in the footage. It's important to note that the management of this first part of the motorcade involves not only secret service agents but also local police station cars and motorcycles. Now let's discuss the second part of the motorcade. In this part, the foremost vehicle is the lead car or lead motorcycle. All the other vehicles in the motorcade follow this lead vehicle. The lead car or motorcycle is responsible for determining the route the convoy will take and the speed at which it will travel. After the lead car, you see a group of cars known as the Secure Package. These cars have the direct responsibility of protecting the president. In the event of an attack on the motorcade, the Secure Package can operate separately from the rest of the convoy. Among the cars in the Secure Package, the most important one is the president's limousine. However, nobody knows which limousine the president is actually in, as there are two identical limousines that travel together in the secure package. There is no discernible difference between these two limousines. They have the same model, color, tire size, flag, and even the number plates are identical. During the journey, both limousines constantly change their positions, so if an attacker knows which limousine the president is in, they will be confused by seeing two similar limousines. The limousine, also known as the Beast, is not an ordinary vehicle. It was specially designed for the president, and its construction is unique. The limousine is built on a truck frame to provide additional strength. Its entire body is bulletproof, and the windows are made of 5-inch thick ballistic glass, which can withstand bullets fired from nearby. However, it's important to note that only the driver's side window can be opened. The rest of the windows are sealed shut for added security. This extraordinary limousine weighs a whopping 9 tons. It is equipped with various features to ensure the president's safety. These include rocket launchers, grenade launchers, night vision capabilities, tear gas dispensers, short-range guns, emergency oxygen cylinders, and a first aid kit. Additionally, there are always two bottles of the president's blood group available in the vehicle. The tires of the limousine are not ordinary tires. If they burst, the car is capable of maintaining a very high speed. In a secure package, the foremost car serves as a bomb jammer. It is the United States Secret Service Electronic Countermeasure Suburban. The antennas on top of this car emit signals that can reach a long distance. 
This helps in jamming any bombs that may be planted along the route. Additionally, this car has the ability to protect the president from guided missiles. It is equipped with sensors that can detect guided missiles from a far distance. Since guided missiles track the heat of the car, this car releases flares and changes directions to confuse the guided missile. In the secure package, this car is known as the control car. It carries the president's personal doctor and office staff. The last two cars in the motorcade are occupied by secret service agents. The nearby car is referred to as the halfback, as agents are always close to the president in this car. The other car is known as the cat car, or the counter assault team car. Both of these cars have their rear windows open, allowing the agents armed with automatic weapons to be visible. In the event of an attack, the agents in the first car protect the president, while the agents in the second car retaliate against the attacker. Inside this van of the motorcade, there are reporters and journalists. This vehicle is known as the ID car. The agents in this car stay in touch with nearby agents who inform them about any significant or minor events that occur. Another important part of the motorcade is the black truck. It contains trained staff and secret equipment to protect against nuclear and biological attacks. This truck is referred to as the Roadrunner, and you can spot various antennas on it. It serves as a mobile tower on wheels, enabling wireless communication for all the cars in the motorcade. If the president needs to use the internet or make phone calls, the communication system of the motorcade operates through this roadrunner. Within the president's convoy, there is an ambulance. If anyone gets injured, the doctor team in the ambulance provides immediate first aid. Lastly, there is a car for secret service agents that offers backup support. It ensures that no other cars cross the motorcade. In the end, police cars travel behind the motorcade, covering the road. You'll be amazed to know that the entire motorcade, from the starting point to the end, is observed by a helicopter. This helicopter is equipped with automatic machine guns, snipers, and secret service agents who closely monitor the entire convoy. But the story doesn't end there. As you can see in this video, the motorcade is only used when the president needs to travel nearby. However, if the president has to travel outside the country, the mission becomes even more challenging. Two days before the president's flight, both of his limousines, secret service cars, and jammer cars are loaded onto a C-17 Loadmaster cargo plane and sent ahead. On the day of the president's flight from the White House, Marine One helicopter transports him to an airbase. Marine One is the helicopter specifically used by the president. However, it doesn't fly alone. Five helicopters take off at the same time to ensure that no one knows which helicopter the president is traveling in. Upon landing at the airbase, a modified Boeing 747 aircraft called Air Force Two awaits the president. Just as Marine One is the helicopter used by the president, Air Force One refers to the aircraft in which the president travels. During the flight, the president doesn't face any difficulties. That's why this aircraft is equipped with all the necessary facilities for the president's safety and security. It includes a presidential state room, an executive dressing room, a conference room, and a dining room. Additionally, there is a full kitchen and the president's office on board. Just like the president's limousine and Marine One helicopter, Air Force One doesn't fly alone. Two similar planes take off simultaneously. After takeoff, the next challenging task is loading the helicopter into the cargo airplane. Wherever the president goes with his motorcade, the helicopters accompany him. This is because, in any other country, in case of an emergency, helicopters are the only means of transport that do not require a specific airfield for takeoff and landing. The helicopter blades are folded and loaded onto the C-17 Glove Master cargo plane. This cargo plane starts its journey behind the president's airplane. The cost of ensuring the secure travel of the American president is extremely high. According to Vendoffer's production research in Washington, D.C., from the White House to the United Nations headquarters in New York, the president can reach there in just one hour at a cost of $157,000.
It's important to note that this cost is only for one-way travel, and the cost of the return journey is not included.